the now joint panel of Trina Nishimura and Lindsay Simon. <laughs> we appreciate it. We are actually doing a panel that's very similar at exactly the same time. So we're like, maybe we should do the one, two, is better. Just the two of you. You can make it if you try. Just the two of you. <laughs> My, uh, my panel was entitled, So You Want to Be a Voice Actor, Are You Crazy? And your panel was titled... Yeah, your, your title's more fun. <laughs> Mine was just breaking into the biz. <laughs> so, um, by show of hands, who here um, would like to be a voice actor? Awesome, awesome. By show of hands, uh, who would like to know how we became voice actors? Excellent. I am personally offended by anybody who did not raise their hand. <laughs> 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 and then why are you here? So rude. <laughs> no, how dare you? Oh my God. There we go. This is Lydia. Lydia? Yes. Hi. Lydia is an amazing dancer. I don't know if you guys know that or not. True. You want to do a little dancey dance? Yeah? A little bit? Dance! Yeah! Oh! 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 that pose, Lydia. She's gonna do the work. Oh! I think we can just do this for an hour. Yes! Go, Lydia! Go, Lydia! Go Lydia, 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 go Wasted tiny people <laughs> constantly trying to kill themselves. It's like, oh, oh man, you're good. She's a very cute baby. Way to procreate. Good job. She goes right to Oh my god. Hello. Are you going to help us answer questions? Hello. Oh, sorry. That's cool. The handshake tree. Yeah. 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 Sorry. I didn't ask. I didn't ask if that was okay. Oh. My bad. Oh. Oh. <laughs> she wants not to. She wants not to. She doesn't care about Lucy, she just wants not to. <laughs> Sorry for all of you that just came in. We are uh, terribly entertained with an, an adorable little baby. We love babies. I mean, ugh. <laughs> Makes my ovaries hurt. Uh, oh no. Yeah, definitely ovulating right now. Uh, what we were saying before the adorable baby uh, was that uh, this is a voice acting panel for those of you that came in about uh, mine was entitled So You Want to Be a Voice Actor, Are You Crazy? Uh, Lindsay's is entitled Breaking Into the Biz. Same thing, same same. What's up, dude? <laughs> she wants oh, it. Out of Do you want. Lydia here. Oh, look at that. Oh. oh, Lydia. I don't even know you, Mom. <laughs> you can pretend to steal that. There you go. Get it. Oh. Nice. Oh. Nice. Oh. Thank you. Oh. Oh. you just want to go open it. <laughs> Someday you'll use your thumbs. Yep. <laughs> Is that a thing? No? All right. <laughs> Yes. Um, so uh, we had also asked who wanted to be a voice actor and who would like to know how we became voice actors. Uh, and the room was pretty responsive. So how did you break into the biz? Well, I started as a child actor. Um, so my parents say that apparently as soon as I could talk, I would tell them all the time that I wanted to be an actress. Um, and so I begged them for years and years to put me into acting classes, and they weren't super into the idea. Yeah. <laughs> um, and finally, uh, my mom gave in. Oh, no. <laughs> She's happy. Oh, good. Yay! 
<laughs> um, and at, I think it was uh, the age of nine or 10, um, I was put into my first acting class. Usually when people start out, they start out in theater, but it, for whatever reason, the first acting class that I took was actually acting for the camera, so acting for TV and film. So that's um, where my training comes from. My background's in uh, TV and film. Um, and so from there, I continued taking classes, um, specifically just in acting for the camera. And I signed um, with a talent agency um, when I was 10 years old. And um, coincidentally, my very first professional acting job at the age of 10 was a voiceover job. Um, and it was for a Japanese company for um, an audio book that went with um, an English textbook for kids in Japan learning English. And so it was the tape that, they, that the kids would listen to as they would read through the textbook. And so I was one of the voices of, of the children. <laughs> She's just trying to kill herself. It's cool. <laughs> She's just boring. Um, yeah, so that, that was a fun gig where I uh, had to talk very slowly because, <laughs> you know, it was for people learning English. And I remember specific lines saying things like, what do you have for lunch today? I have miso soup. And what did you get for Christmas? I got a shamisen, oh which is a Japanese instrument. And I had no idea what it was. <laughs> anyway, so um, uh, yeah, I continued acting throughout my teenage years. You know, went to school full time, but um, did acting in my free time. Um, you know, done plenty of on camera projects, commercials. Um, back when Texas had tax incentives for film projects, I got to do more fun film projects. Um, but started working at Funimation when I was 17 years old. Um, so my mom actually had to sign the contract for me because I was not 18 yet. <laughs> um, yeah, so I was still in high school and um, it was at the time where I was transitioning from um, the kids department into the adult department at my talent agency. And they were like, oh, hey, so you've done voiceover work before, so we should send you uh, to audition at Funimation. Um, and um, at the time I uh, was represented by the same talent agency as Cher McKee. And uh, they're like, Jeremy works at Funimation all the time and she loves it, we should send you uh, to audition. So I went, auditioned, uh, first director I auditioned for was Tyler Walker, and he was the first one who cast me in a show and the rest is history. What was the show? Um, I believe it was, give me a second, Bamboo Blade. I was in that. Yeah. Aww. I was a Nishimura, but that's, I it was something Nishimura. Oh really? Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Um, I believe the name of my character, it was, it was a very small character, it was, I don't remember which character's little brother, but a character's little brother, and his name was Kazuhiko. Kazutai. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I too have been acting since I was a child. Um, I started acting when I was nine years old in my local community theater. My mother, as well, was like, you don't want to do that. That's awful. Um, so then I, I started touring professionally with a theater company when I was 13, and uh, I was raised by an amazing single mother um, with three other siblings, so she had four kids, uh, or I, there's four kids in my family, and uh, when the theater company was like, oh, we want to take your kid on tour, she was like, take one of them, you want two? Like, how many do you want? Um, so I started touring at 13, and then I went to college, and I was going to be a grown-up, I was going to be a lawyer, I was gonna go into maritime law, that was the plan. And then um, a friend of mine uh, told me about an audition at Funimation. I was like, no, Jimmy, I'm not doing that. I'm gonna go to law school. I'm gonna be a lawyer. I'm gonna have a 401k, whatever that is, I'm gonna have it. And he was like, it pays. I was like, when is the audition? Um, so I auditioned and I was like, yeah, this is really what I wanna do. This has always been what I've wanted to do. And so this is what I'm doing now. That was 15 years ago. Um, and so, yeah, I've done some commercial stuff, industrial stuff, like, you know, the stuff you do to pay the, I've been a mascot. I've been everything uh, in the best possible way. Um, <laughs> and uh, here I am now. So that's how I got into voice acting. Um, as far as how you can get into voice acting, um, I think my number one thing that I tell people 
I think, I know. My number one thing that I tell people is that if you wanna be a voice actor, you should be an actor. Uh, because saying you want to be a voice actor and only do dubs is like saying you want to be a baker and all you're going to make is cherry pie, which is great. Everybody loves cherry pie. That's a great analogy. <laughs> yeah, but mm -hmm. cherries aren't always in season. And if you're a bakery that only sells cherry pie, what about the pumpkin pies or the cakes or the cookies? Uh, you'll, you'll be just... very poor. <laughs> I was trying to dance around it. Uh, you'll be very poor. You'll have a lot of cherries, uh, but very poor. Uh, so, yeah, um, that's my number one tip, is to be an actor. Um, in order to be an actor, uh, you can take acting classes. Yes. yes. And it can be any kind of acting class. It doesn't need to be an acting class specific to voiceover. Oftentimes, that's a little trickier to find. Um, you know, it can be a theater camp. You can start out there, or um, a class like I did that was acting for the camera, or you can start out with uh, improv classes. There are all sorts of acting classes that you can start out with and use as a new starting point. Yeah, um, or <clears throat> if that's not available to you in your area, uh, also take classes from accredited people. Oh yes, that's, that's an important, important note. <laughs> so important, like Uncle Johnny's basement acting classes, only $700 <laughs> three days. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Um, but you can check, also... nope. Right. <laughs> yeah. You can also, uh, if you're in school, like in high school, middle school, or university or in college, you know, uh, you can work with acting classes there or community theater. There's always, there's always places to volunteer in any production, anywhere in the world. Um, somebody always needs to do something. And if you're like, oh, I auditioned for the show and I didn't get in, then you can be like, hey, do you need a props person? I can, I can bring people props. Um, or a music person, or somebody to help paint sets. Um, you'd be surprised how many times you'll get work from knowing somebody that you did a show with. Um, yeah, yeah. So I, I would recommend, you know, classes, volunteering, uh, getting involved with your local community, uh, your local theater community. She's having a hard day. Yeah. Yeah. We've all been there, Lydia. <laughs> It's good for, it's my job. Um, uh, like, like for inspiration? Yeah. yeah. Okay, like, yeah, let, have, let me make her mad again. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make her mad. Hashtag don't make Lydia don't, mad. Don't make Lydia mad. Love for Lydia. Yeah, yeah Lydia. <laughs> you guys have recording Oh, I know. I know it's the yeah. worst date ever. <laughs> and we're done. Uh, so, uh, my second piece of advice is to get comfortable with the word no, because mm -hmm. as an actor, you hear the word no 99 times, and then you get one yes, and that makes all of the no's. You have to get very, very comfortable with the feeling of rejection, because <laughs> yeah. that's basically what the life of an actor is, is just getting rejected all the time, <laughs> and you still have to love yourself. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you do with rejection? like? Like for me, when I audition for something, I immediately forget it. I'm like, I can't, I don't invest in any audition. Yeah. I try really hard to be that way. <laughs> and if I'm being perfectly honest, because that is the advice that most people give is like, you know, forget, audition for something and then don't even think about it, forget about it. I have tried <laughs> in the almost 18 years that I've been doing this <laughs> to do that. And I'm not great at it, if I'm being perfectly honest with you guys. Um, so, the best thing that I have been able to do for myself, since it's not like I can just forget about it, is to just shift my perspective. And wrap, even though I don't forget about the audition and I still you know, hope that something will come of it, I don't go into it uh, with you know, the expectation that like, oh, I'm for sure we're gonna get this one or anything. I go into it with like a realistic sense of what the odds are and for almost anything you audition for the odds aren't great there are tons of people auditioning and um also trying to think about it in terms of like and you know if i don't get this it wasn't meant to be mm -hmm. you know it doesn't it doesn't mean that um i'm not good it doesn't mean that i didn't try my best um all it means is it it wasn't the right fit for me someone else was a better fit for it not that whoever got it is better than i am 
um, or you know, gave a better audition, a better audition. <laughs> they just gave a different audition, and their interpretation fit, you know, whatever the director or casting director uh, was wanting. Because um, this is all very subjective at the end of the day, um, and um, and also keeping in mind. There are going to be more. There are going to be tons more auditions. You're going to have so many more opportunities. And hey, this audition was great practice. Right. Yeah. What are your other tips as far as uh, what things that you've learned over the years? Like, if you want to be a voice actor, what are your like? These are the things, or one of them. Yeah. Number one for sure is acting classes. Um, and I would say, um, other than that, having a realistic idea of what that really means. Because um, I think a lot of people, you were talking about this, like don't necessarily understand that um, those of us who do work in the dubbing industry, this is not all we do. Um, we wouldn't really be able to make a living if that was all we did. Um, uh, so I still work on um, on-camera projects. I do lots of commercial work, um, on-camera and voiceover. Um, a lot of people um, uh, will be a dubbing actor for Funimation, and then they are also real estate agents or right. teachers. Um, so I think that some people have uh, this misconception that uh, you know we make tons of money from <laughs> just dubbing anime, and that is that is not not true, not true at all, <laughs> not how it works. So um, that is why it's important that if, you know if you want to be a voice actor. Um, and you, that you either need to also be an actor in, you know, in other mediums, um, so that you can make money that way, or you need to have some other path to make a living as well alongside that. I think it's really important. I mean, I, I graduated from my university like with honors, and I made great grades, and I did all the things right, and then I got out, and I was like. Mom, I'm gonna be an actor. She was like, I thought we were over this. <laughs> uh, she's like, you better get a side hustle like with a quickness. Um, and so I did. I had a side hustle for a really long time. Uh, I was a bartender for a really long time. Um, and then I just started getting more and more work. But it took a really long time. Um, I mean, I've been, I've been acting since I was nine and I couldn't fully support myself acting um, until, you know, uh, maybe like six years ago. Um, and so it's, it's one of those things like managing your expectations and being realistic about it to make sure that you can eat and you can, you know, pay off your student loans Hello. <laughs> and you can do all of the things you need to do to make sure that you're financially okay and that your future is still, you're saving for your retirement yeah. and 401ks, they are important. They're a thing uh, that you have health insurance. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's such a good point. Um, Go to school. Yes. Go, go to, to school, school and stay in school. Um, so when I went to college, I actually did not major in theater or anything acting related. Um, uh, I majored in marketing and also psychology. Um, and uh, I really enjoyed studying something different. Because, um, you know, you can always take acting. Not to say that if any of you, uh, you know, do major in theater or would like to, that, that, that there's anything wrong with that. Um, but, you know, just because you want to be an actor doesn't mean that you have to go to school for that. And, um, you know, it's good to study other things and explore other avenues as well. But overall, getting an education, I am all for that. Right. And when you, when you do, you know, uh, when you, like marketing and psychology are both really important things for acting. Like true. marketing yourself and marketing, you know, who you are and all the other things. And then psychology in general, like getting inside of uh, people's motivations and inside of studying people and why they do Understanding they do. people, yeah. Yeah, it's exactly what acting is. Uh, so yeah, those are uh, some good tips. Um, I would also say to surround yourself with like-minded people. So, um, because like I said, like you never know when you're gonna get a gig from somebody that you've worked with or volunteered with or did a show with. Um, and see art, any kind of art, observe people, all, yeah, I also, I would say like along with acting classes, um, I think what's helped me grow a lot as an actor too is um, 
watching shows and movies and learning from those performances that I see. And so like in voiceover specifically, um, I have found myself many, many times, um, if I'm watching an animated show, trying to imitate some of the voices that I hear. And that's helped me along the way to kind of discover new voices that I didn't know that I could do. Um, and it's also, it's just a fun exercise to do. But I also do it too with uh, like radio ads. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like if I, <laughs> in the car? Yeah, totally. And I'm like, oh, she really killed it on that one. She sounded awesome. I want to try and I, you know, I liked her style on that or, you know, whatever, and I'll try to kind of like imitate what I hear. Um, and it just helps you kind of discover new ways to do things that maybe you haven't tried before. Um, yeah, so like imitating what you hear and what you see is, is a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an easy way to kind of uh, teach yourself in a way. Also, it's kind of cool, like, like there are times where my, I'll spend an entire, you know, two days binging a show and people are like, what are you doing? I'm like, binging a show for work. And they're like, yeah. you're binging a show, you're watching, you're studying. Yeah, totally. So it's kind of awesome. It's like yeah. when your mom's like, um, what are you doing? Clean the room. It's like, I'm working. I have to work. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, but so it's true. Cool. It's, and, and it's yeah. really important to ingest art and media and surround yourself with it so that you can figure out different things. Yeah. Then also, once, once you have honed your craft, I would say the next step is getting together a demo reel. Mm -hmm. um, so what is a demo reel, Trina? <laughs> a demo reel is basically like the business card of the business. So in voice acting, we don't have <clears throat> business cards, we have demo reels. It's basically like giving somebody your voice. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a lot of different things. There are different kinds of demo reels. There are commercial demo reels where you're like, yes, you do. It's not this cheesy at all. <laughs> like, okay. yes, that you. won't book you work. That won't book you work at all. Um, you too can drive a new on the um, But yeah, so there's like a commercial reel and there's like a, a character reel and things like that. Um, <clears throat> so it's a, basically a, a very short, very, very short, uh, like maybe a minute, maybe, uh, snippet <laughs> of different examples of what you're capable of. Um, I would say that putting Bugs Bunny on your character reel will not get you work. Bad idea. Yeah. yeah. It's not a good idea to, um, even though you may do a great impression of characters that already exist, um, it's not going to be helpful, um, if you think about it, um, to do imitations of characters that already exist and are already voiced by other actors um, on your reel. Um, they want to hear what you can bring to the table for characters that have not been voiced yet. <laughs> so just showing, you know, you can use the uh, characters that already exist as inspiration um, for your own unique voices that you can do. Um, but yeah, like you don't want to do like specific lines from from Family Guy or yeah. <laughs> Seth MacFarlane's already got that. So like Scooby Doo, whatever it may be. <laughs> yeah. So usually for for demo reels, what will what what will happen if you hire when you hire someone to produce the reel for you, they will write original copy for you to use, um, so that you're not pulling from anything specific that already exists. Copy is. Oh, right, sorry, forget. Cop a script. Um, so they'll write out the lines for you um, and make it up. So like on my commercial reel, none of the snippets are from real commercials or real ads. Um, the uh, man that I hired to produce this for me, he wrote it all for me. You know, he, um, he was somebody who happened to already know me and he kind of knew, um, you know, the type of things that I, uh, would typically be hired to do and kind of, you know, the, the, the different areas of, um, what am I trying to say? Your wheelhouse. Yes, yes, that. Um, and so based on that, he wrote what would fit my voice well and the type of work that he will hire him, um, uh, who he has never met before. What he will do is conduct a phone interview with them and kind of talk with them about, um, you know, um, you know, where their voice typically lies and kind of what their range is and then he can get a sense of um, uh, what, their, what would fit their voice best in terms of copy or the script and go from there. I will also say like as far as <clears throat> how did you find him? Like, so this is Bruce Carey. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you know him. Mm -hmm. um, but 
that he how did uh, he was with the same talent agency as me, so that's how I knew him. Yeah. So how does one get an agent? So uh, the, yeah, yeah. So agencies for specifically for voiceover, um, it helps a lot if you already have a demo reel, so they can hear what you are capable of. Because they're not really going to be interested in taking you on if they don't have any evidence that. You, will, you would be capable of um, getting any work for them. Um, they also definitely want to see that you have lots of acting classes under your belt and to see that you've had training. Mm -hmm. um, what else? I think it's important to remember that uh, it's a business, right? Um, so when you meet an agent or when you're shopping for an agent or when you're trying to figure out you know, where, what your real house is, um, <clears throat> being able to say, I spent the past year studying at blah 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 university, or I've taken these classes, or these are the plays that I've been in, or this is, you know, like little starter things. Being able to approach an agent at that point and find the right agent for you um, is so important. Uh, and you can figure those sorts of things out by being surrounded by people within your local community. Um, I can't tell you who a good agent in this area is because I don't live here. Um, but anywhere you live in the world, there is voiceover work. There is acting work. Um, you just have to find the people that are already doing it and be like, let's be friends! Um, which I always find when you scream at somebody that you're going to be friends. It's helpful. It's like right in there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so those are kind of some tips uh, and getting started. Also, um, a lot of people do this. I don't personally have experience with what I'm about to tell you about, <laughs> um, but um, I know this has been helpful for a lot of people to get work um, uh, either before they get an agent or even after they have an agent um, to get other additional work. There are websites like voices.com where you can sign up. I do believe you have to pay some sort of Fee, like annual fee to be a member where you create a profile and you can audition for projects that are posted on that website. You can get work that way. You don't need to be represented by an agency to do that. So at this point, we have given you some A's. Now, if you'd be so kind as to give us some Q's, we will give you more A's. <laughs> sure. So that hand uh, with the baseball cap on. I'd say. Um, mainly it's figuring out the lay of the land. <laughs> not getting lost. Not getting lost, yeah. Um, checking your schedule a lot to make sure, you know, you're on time for everything and making sure you're where you need to be. Um, but, um, yeah, like getting a feel, it's exciting, uh, getting to uh, meet everybody, uh, especially if it's you know in a new city you haven't been to before and hearing from people. Um, it can be a little bit chaotic, but like in a good, fun way. Yeah. I think my, my first day at a convention is always like super awkward. <laughs> like you can go anywhere. Like I can go anywhere in the building, anywhere in the hotel, anywhere, anywhere, and like nobody knows who I am yet. Uh, that's because it's more and more rare. And, like by day two, by like Saturday, if you're like, let's go get sushi. Like you'll be sitting there like eating, and somebody's like, hi, hi. <laughs> like, hello. I just, how's your role? All right. You're trainer. Right? <laughs> like I mean, it's cool. It's just one of those things. Like day one, it's like I can walk around in pajamas, and everyone's like, who's that crazy homeless girl? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I love that. I love that like I can interact with people and be like, oh my god, how is your con going? What are you excited still about? Incognito. Yeah, because I'm a voice and as long as I'm not like screaming or like whatever, uh, then people are like, oh yeah, maybe that's Trina. Like I've had people be like, is your name Trina? I'm like, no. All right. <laughs> Never heard of her. <laughs> Who wants Trina Wood? Um, so I love that. I, I love that about the first day uh, because I feel like I can move more yeah. And, like, and it's not like, 
Hi. <laughs> you make that awkward like. Mm -hmm. I had to like hi. <laughs> my weirdest Sorry, like day to. one like this girl followed me and I was like all right that's cool. She's following me and then I went <laughs> I went into the bathroom and I was like in the stall peeing and oh, this girl just oh, like no. I just saw like feet. Stop it! Oh, no. oh, oh, no. oh, no. Guys, please don't do that. <laughs> she was playing on us being peace. <laughs> And I was like, not in here! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Um, yeah, so that's what I like about the first game. Respect that. Right, Dude, okay, you get to pick the next one. exactly what you're doing and then divide it by a hundred and do that because that's crazy you look crazy um, but for me like whenever I'm doing voice acting stuff uh, especially initially when I first started I like got to like I did the audition and I was cast as a small role and I was really excited and I got the booth and I was like oh my god I don't know how to do this because <laughs> it like all of the tools and all of the things in your toolbox are gone and, like you don't have costumes and you don't have lighting and you don't have um, you know, you don't, especially in dubbing, you don't get to make a lot of the choices that you would make on camera or um, uh, on camera or on stage. Uh, there's no rehearsal time uh, as far as dubbing goes. Like, it's insane. There's no rehearsal time at all. Um, and very rarely will you know the plot in general, especially now that we're doing a lot of simul dubbing at animation specifically. Um, but it's, for me, I mean, it's just all of the training that I had beforehand and then being like, okay, I don't have my face. And this is how to time up the flaps in the pre-lay, right? Um, it, it was a challenge at first, but it's like anything else, right? If you're passionate about it, if it's in, if you're trained for it, and you kind of have an idea about um, rhythm and cadence and uh, your own skill set, and the directors are amazing. Uh, so that's very helpful. Yeah. Um, so, <clears throat> I would also say that, um, so if we're talking about anime specifically, um, yeah, so like with on-camera work for film, typically speaking, the performances are supposed to be extre extremely natural <laughs> and, or and organic and how you would just act in real life, you know. If I was in a film right now, I should be talking the exact same way I'm talking right now. I'm just talking and having a real conversation. Whereas on stage, it's a little bit more of a performance um, because you, um, you know, you're performing for an audience that's right there for you, and your movements typically do need to be a little bit more pronounced and bigger, and you have to project with your voice. Um, when it comes to voiceover, and if we're specifically talking about anime, it. Um, it will vary, actually, it, depending on the show. There are certain shows where the performance, it you know, calls for the performances to be a little bit more subdued, more along the lines of how you would uh, perform a scene for a film. And then there are ones that are a lot bigger and supposed to be a lot more animated. Um, and uh, luckily, when we're doing dubbing for anime, the show's already been done in Japanese, so you it's very clear watching it in Japanese um, what the style is supposed to be. Um, and definitely one of the biggest directions, one of the most common directions I would get when I first started working at Funimation since my background is in acting for film. Um, the first shows that I was that I started out on were kind of the crazier, like, you know, a really big, you know, um, Zany, yeah, it's a good word, uh, uh, type style. 
the direction that I would often get is, okay, give us more, more energy, bigger, bigger. You sound too real. <laughs> this is not like a real person. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that just just took practice, and and you know, uh, with enough time of uh, practice with that, you um, are you get faster at being able to pick up the the style of a show really quickly, and you're like, okay, this is this kind of show, this is the type of performance I need to give. Like your, for example, your uh, your character in Steins Gate is very different than your character in Bamboo Bam Bamboo Bam. The blade one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's an excellent question. Thank you. Great question. Yes. Yeah. Um. So I've been recently cast in a video game. Congratulations. And um, with her, with her, but um, I have very little to no acting experience, and so I want to try to find some acting like co like an acting coach or some classes somewhere because even though i've been cast and stuff i kind of want to get in the door at funimation if that makes sense sure. um so are there any sorts of like specific acting classes or acting coaches because i want to go with an acting coach because i have a disability that might make it harder for me to understand or that m i might need like more time with understanding stuff with someone one on one than like a whole than having someone to take a whole, like a long amount of time sure. for a whole group of people. Yeah. So, what recommendations or types of classes would you recommend? Well, um, so um, I am not familiar with what would be available in your area. This is my first time uh, to the area. Um, but Google is an excellent tool, and um, you can research on the internet um, and um, find, you know, search for uh, acting coaches, and specifically for ones who offer private coaching and one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, and oftentimes, um, usually, these coaches will um, have resources where you can um, reach out to people that they've trained with before or see testimonials of people who have worked with them um, so you can get a sense of um, you know their style and what they're like to work with. But yeah, Google is an excellent tool. Totally, totally. And I think it's really awesome that you're pursuing, you know, uh, because you are being cast, which is great. <laughs> but um, most all actors that I know yeah. still train. Yes. You know, yes. we still go to classes, we still go to workshops. Um, so it's You're never ever, done ever. It's an ever evolving thing. Uh, so Google, Google your heart out. All right. Thank you so much. You. Uh, all the way in the back there. Yep. You know, I, I will say this as a woman of color. Um, I would never do an accent that was disrespectful. Like I would never do, I've heard demo reels where they do like Asian accents. Oh no. That are like oh, God. unbelievably racist. It's like, nah man. I mean, it's one thing if you're like, you know what, here are my three different British, right? You got like your uh, sort Cockney. of, your Cockney, your uh, BBC, your whatever, right? Um, and you're not a person of color. Cool. All right, so can you do a South African accent? Sure. Um, but I wouldn't personally, as, uh, as a person who is of color, like if somebody sent me a demo reel and it was all accents and they weren't spot on, like if they were parodying or making fun of um, an accent, then like I'd burn it immediately um, because that's just messed up. But if you're just like really down and you're like, I know how to do all of these things, um, then that's great, but um, I wouldn't do any, if you're going to do an accent, make sure that it's respectful, make sure that it's really good, um, and make sure that you're not submitting something, especially in the current political climate um, and within the entertainment industry. Like, if they, want, if they want somebody with an accent and they have the choice between a native speaker and a non-native speaker, they're gonna go with the native speaker. Every time. Every time. Um, <clears throat> and like with video games now, 
if there's a, an, an Asian person, it's like, we want somebody from Asia. If there's a British person, like, so I personally, unless you're amazing, I would focus more on training um, and making sure that your demo reel is produced really well, personally. Yeah, I think really the only people I know of who will include accents in their demo reels are people who have had like really intense like dialect, <laughs> like dialect coaching where they had specific training, uh, you know, working with various accents or, you know, one specific accent. So if it's going to be in your demo reel, I mean, it, it needs to be spot on, like no one would be able to know that that wasn't your natural you know, accent that you already have kind of thing. Hey guys, just uh, break it real quick. Uh, we are gonna have to end in about five minutes because these ladies have to get back on the planes to go make more anime. You want them to make more anime, right? Woo! Yes! yes! So five minutes, we have questions. Let's make this like a, a lightning speed round. round. Got okay. it. Go. So, what was your favorite role to play, and could you possibly say a line from your character? I love all of my roles, but if you'd like to hear a role from Attack on Titan, I can do that. Yes! I can do it. I'm strong. Real strong. None of you come close. I am a warrior! Yeah. Woo! Um, I also don't have a favorite, but um, I'll do Nanisa. Kuro <gasps> Sensei, no! acting roles um, I'm just a little bit iffy with like doing the fan doves or a bridge series so what so how did you guys start off with like doing that from like the very beginning like what were some roles that you have done or done research on or what were the best like projects to work on I guess you could say because again I'm iffy about the fan dubs or the bridge series of doing that um, personally I, I uh, for dubbing specifically uh, personally, the director does a lot of the like a lot of the background and a lot of the research, and they do a lot of uh, they they research the show ad nauseum. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm I've been very fortunate to work with the really amazing directors. 
uh, but the times that I, there is any sort of like research uh, to be done, uh, I prefer to read um, instead of getting somebody else's voice or somebody else's interpretation and getting stuck in that. So personally, I just like to read stuff about it instead of watching anything. Yeah, and oftentimes um, when you go into audition, unfortunately, you don't even know the show you're auditioning for until you get there. Um, and so they kind of have to just give you like a quick rundown of what the show's all about, uh, give you very quick, brief uh, descriptions of the characters, yeah. and then you just kind of have to go and run with it. Okay, so there are two more questions, and we're going to answer them within 30 seconds of each. Go! In your voice, can you say, eat, yoked, send me an emote? Oh, wow. Eat, yoked. Can you send me an emote? Yep. Uh -huh. I'm from seventh grade. I just graduated high school, and I'm from a college for an associate's in psychology, and also a bachelor's. Woohoo! Congrats! Should I make a demo or an agency? Demo reel before trying to get an agency. Excellent. Thank you guys so much for coming to the <laughs>